Hey everyone, I hope you are all having a good summer, and this is really exciting given the topic I will be covering today, because they fly, they screech, they're bright, they are strobe rockets. Yes, I am talking about strobe rockets once again, just like I did a few years ago, and I hope all of you are ready to know what they are, how they are made, and how to obtain them. Hopefully the information here is helpful, and I really do appreciate you guys for looking. First off, there are many variations of strobe rockets, and chances are you have seen one flying in the sky. It is not uncommon that someone will light off one of these rockets no matter what the condition is of their environment, as California is a haven for these kind of rockets. The PGI has also incorporated them, and up to now, starting from 2020, they are the number one most popular pyrotechnic device. They are truly amazing fireworks, and if you have ever heard one before, it is very likely that you were given goosebumps because the noise and effect that they create is something otherworldly. There is nothing like a strobe rocket, and they are most likely the greatest pyrotechnic art in all of existence. So, what exactly is a strobe rocket? As you may already know, strobe rockets sound like helicopters. They are very bright when strobing in the air, they have an initial whistle before launch, and also a final whistle towards the end before a very large report. The whistle near the end tends to have different pitches, but most of the strobe rockets heard sound like a TIE fighter or a car screeching and spinning out of control just before a huge report occurs at the end. In California, we are used to seeing strobe rockets rockets contain a very large report at the end. So large, in fact, that almost every car alarm on the block begins applauding. There are roughly 200 grams of report in a 4-inch strobe rocket heading, which is roughly 8 times louder than a canister shell marked as a consumer firework, and contains 1,539 times more flash powder than allowed by the CPSC's maximum aerial brake flash content limit which explains why they are so loud and heavy when hearing them explode. According to Skylighter, strobe rockets began in the late 80s and early 90s. The famous rocketry inventors who discovered these rockets that we know and love today were Doc Barr and Steve Laduque. During that time, they began experimenting with different whistle rockets, and when the idea of adding strobe within the motor came up, the strobe rocket was born, and many variations are present to this very day. After all, strobe rockets are, as a matter of fact, probably the best rockets that exist, and while they are so popular, it is rather disappointing that none of them, in fact, even at very small explosive content, will ever be made in the consumer market, due to not only how risky they are to make, but also having a very short lasting shelf life. Now that we know what they are, how exactly do they work? A strobe rocket contains whistle fuel and strobe fuel, but getting around to creating and obtaining the whistle and strobe fuel powders is much more sophisticated than at first apparent, as while there are several ingredients required, the largest hindrance through all of it is that you are going to be working in very large quantities. Another big problem is of course the safety factors, to which whistle fuel is so reactive it would almost be considered second place to flash powder, and it is even more explosive than the lift charges used in projectiles. It can only mean that one spark or static discharge will be the end of many things, not just the environment you are creating them within, but also a very high risk of going blind if any accidents were to occur. Well, I just had a uh, fire here in the pyro shop. I accidentally grabbed the strobe again and pressed another increment on top. Brought it over here to uh, get a screwdriver and scrape the top off. Never had an issue, and but this time it ignited. I just wanted to point out to people starting out the protocols of keeping all your stuff in lids and covering it and uncovering it each time. It's no joke, you know. Just uh, fair warning, don't scratch on that. <laughs> don't scratch on that AP fuel, uh, strobe fuel, because it will ignite. 
Strobe fuel is also required, which gives them the flashing and popping effect they need when in flight. It burns slower than whistle fuel, but also much hotter, just like thermite due to the magnesium and aluminum within the mixture. When building a strobe rocket, you may want to save a few bucks and get out the old dial and a hammer and give the fuel a good whack to pack it firmly in the tube. Lo and behold, while this seems at your convenience, it is actually the easiest way to blow up, as ramming whistle or strobe fuel is incredibly dangerous given it is shock, friction, and heat sensitive. Do not ever try it, as I promise you will not have a good day. The best way to build a strobe rocket is with a press, tube reinforcement, and correct pressure. Not using a press will result in no packed fuel, not using a tube reinforcement will break the tube upon pressing, and not using the correct pressure will result in the rocket catoing, meaning the rocket blows up upon takeoff, as incorrect pressure fluctuates the fuel's firmness within the tube. The pressure achieved to lift the rocket with a giant report on it will not retain, and expect it to explode upon takeoff nonetheless without the right force from the press. Now, assuming you wanted to obtain a strobe rocket, enjoy the helicopter effect they have, and witness their amazing performance up close, there are a few things worth noting. As already mentioned earlier, they are far from a consumer firework, and you cannot go find them from any consumer firework store. They are not even imported or classified as 13G professional grade fireworks, and they simply do not make their way into commercial transportation via DOT approval due to how unstable they are. Building and lighting off a strobe rocket either requires that you have a valid ATF's Type 54 Federal Explosives License, and depending on the state, that you also acquire a state license or permit. You also need insurance, proper storage, and a logbook to report each device you make and set off. Pretty discouraging, right? Well, actually, there is an easier way, as you can simply look around for your local pyro groups in your area, join a rocket club, or visit the PGI, as any of those methods will work fine, and you can build as many fireworks as you want legally under specialist training. If you do not plan on storing strobe rockets, manufacturing them, or transporting them, and you would like to set them off on your own property, you may do so, but please do check over your state statutes, and make sure that it is not illegal to possess or create any explosive device. As with that out of the way, the ATF is the last strict division you need to worry about. As you will be in big trouble if you ever carry any strobe rockets in your vehicle, market them to other people, store them in your china cabinet, or manufacture them by business means. Well that just about wraps up today's video on strobe rockets. I hope that you have all learned something and are looking forward to this coming forth. Be sure to check out any other videos I've done, such as what the difference is between firecrackers and dynamite, and I hope you all are doing well. Do have a great summer, and I will see you all next time.